So how about that? All right. It is my absolute honor and privilege to invite Mr. Julian Bontrager, Pastor Julian Bontrager up. He pastors Journey Church up in Indiana. And uh, Julian, it is our honor and our privilege to come, uh, come hear from you this morning. Guys, can we welcome Pastor Julian Bontrager this morning? live are we good okay <clears throat> well thank you so much um, what an amazing morning it is to be in this house something has happened here since I was here last <laughs> and it's good um, one minute about who I am and all that then we'll get into much better things um, my wife Janie and I are here and this is such an amazing time. We usually come in the winter like all the other annoying people from the north and invade your space and plug up your streets and all that, and then we leave. We're here, and we're typically not here when it's this warm. And it's obvious to me that those who endure throughout the whole year have a special kind of strength on their life. <laughs> but let me just give you this. Don't ever complain about the heat down here. If you do, you run the risk of the Lord moving you to Goshen, Indiana in January. <laughs> and then you will repent for your grievance before the Lord. It's hot here, but you know what? It's better than the cold there. I can tell you from experience. Um, so we are here with great friends of ours and fellow pastors, Steve and Renee. And it's interesting that I even have found this house. I was thinking just sitting in my seat, how in the world does it even happen that we're here? This is strange. Literally, Steve heard from the Lord, what, f a number of years ago, invited me to a conference where I first met Reuben. Never knew this guy existed either. And these connections have started happening, and it's been one amazing connection from the Lord after another after another. And God has so blessed us with relationship like this, and we're able to spend a few days down here together and rest something I don't know how to do very well, but I'm trying. So anyway, it's good to be here. Uh, my wife and I, we have two sons, what, 14 and 17. And it's interesting. Those of you with little kids, <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> and, uh, no, it's not from, not from the angle that it gets worse. I'm saying enjoy these moments because it it happens so fast, and only the old people used to say that stuff, and now I'm saying it. Your life changes so quickly when you have kids, and they're in a good season right now. We're enjoying that, but my goodness, you have a baby one day, and they're driving the next, and you're like, how did we get here? How did we get here? How did we get here as this church? The last time I was here, the building looked differently. I pulled in and thought, wow, that's a nice facelift. The place looks good. Whoever did that, good job. <laughs> and you come inside, and there's a few things different. And I said, wow, they've, they've changed the face of this place. I don't know. We've been here, what, half a dozen times-ish? I don't, I don't know. And every time it's been good. Every time that I've been here, I felt like I am with God's people, and I feel at home. I really mean that. Some places you go, you feel, you know, just it's a little awkward and a little, just not sure. You, you tread softly. But here I don't feel that at all. I have felt very warmly welcomed from the moment we got here. And then I need to brag on these people for just a minute. <laughs> Take me into the Holy of Holies. Oh, my Jesus. I could have stayed there the rest of the morning. And I don't say that to elevate them. I can tell you by what the Lord shows me that these are not self-serving people. And they have walked in an anointing to hear from the Lord and to release on earth and give back to God. And I hope that you don't take them for granted. Many places have worship teams and all that. And this is not to throw any shade on anyone. But what you have here is special. And I hope that you don't ever misplace 
to glory, but appreciate it. Appreciate it. Give God thanks for what he's doing here. I know what it's like to serve. My wife and I have been on a worship team for probably 20 years-ish, something like that, and I know the dedication of these people. It costs you something to be actively engaged in ministry. It is a, it is a continual demand on your life. And so when I see people that are that effective, that are that connected to each other, it doesn't just happen overnight. It actually takes spending time together. It takes being very intentional and actually sacrificing your life so that people, and many, especially in the winter, you will have here enjoying your service and all that, and they will never acknowledge you or come and say thank you. And if you did it for the praises of men, you would quit today. Amen. I, I know what I'm talking about here. If you do it for the praise of men, you will quit today. Thank God we don't run on that fuel. And I know that this team doesn't run on that fuel. Anyway, I say that to say I recognize what is happening here. I also recognize there has been an increase. How free can I be in this place? So I, I, need, to, I need to give you the, the disclaimer is... Sometimes in my, in my being so black and white, some think that I'm so cold and so harsh, and, and there's nothing in me that ever wants to be so aggressive and hurt anyone with words or any way. That's not in my heart. So sometimes I will not finish a thought or I won't convey completely what's going on, and people say, you missed something or whatever. Hey, peace, love, and joy in this place, all right? The only thing I want to bring to you this morning is something that you can either increase and build your life on more firmly and deeply or add more fuel to the fire that already exists. I only want to see your life strengthened and more equipped and more filled with the presence of God. And I hope, honestly, that, that you already know the things that I want to get into in the Word. I hope that you are already advanced beyond where I am. If you are, praise God. And I just want to throw some gas on your fire. I also hope that there are some here that may not have heard what I want to release this morning because I believe in a body this size. There are many people at different levels or different places in their walk with the Lord. So anyway, what I want to say is what I have experienced in this house before was good. And what I have experienced and noticed in this house this morning is better. You are on a good trajectory spiritually. This is not, I don't know the storyline of what all has happened in this house, and I don't need to know. What, and, and this is not being dishonoring to any, anyone or anything that has happened here. What I'm saying is there are times and there are seasons when we take what is familiar and normal, and the Lord says that is good for this season, but I'm bringing you into something that is better and closer to my heart. And I believe you're stepping into that. I believe you're discovering things that have not been released here before, and you're, you're functioning in ways that you have not before, and it's good. My only word of caution to you this morning is, don't get weird. <laughs> if I had a dollar for every weirdo I've encountered. <laughs> There's no reason to get weird. You can, you can become passionate, you can become alive, you can become more exuberant in your worship, you can become all of these things without being a weirdo. <laughs> that much is free before we start this morning in the Word. Bless you, and here we go if you have your Bibles. Can we look into 1 Corinthians? One of the problems that I face is always having, there's never a good place to end because there's so much good in the Word of God. One of the dangers of giving a mic to somebody out of town as you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> so I do not take lightly this opportunity. I don't take lightly the privilege to deliver the word in this house. To your leadership here, thank you for this opportunity, and I respect what God is doing in you and through you. And I want to say this. If I misrepresent anything that is not in agreement with this word this morning, then that belongs to me. I own it and I stand to be corrected. If I present to you what is true from the word of God and you don't like it because of whatever reason, then I would dare you to take your dislikes to the Lord and say, what is with this? 
and ask him for revelation. Is that fair enough? There are two pretty clearly different camps in the Christian world, especially in this country today. One of those camps is the cessationalist. The other is the sensationalist. You have some chasing a tickle. You have some adamantly rejecting anything of power. Some are chasing a tickle. Some want nothing to do with any of that. I propose to you that we get into the word of God and let's see what happens from there. First Corinthians in chapter 12, I will try to move through this quickly. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the spirit of God calls Jesus accursed and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the what? Talk to me, church, for the what? For the profit of all, for the benefit of everyone, or for the increase in value to their life. The increase of value for the profit of all. What is the point of every gift that is mentioned in the word of God? It's for the benefit of everyone. For to one is given a word of wisdom through the spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as what? He wills. I find this very interesting. One of the most disputed, and I did not come here to start a war, I just want you to know, one of the most disputed things in the whole body of Christ is, well, our gifts for today, are these things for then? Did they go away? Blah, blah, blah. And I have stepped into very dangerous territory. In your life personally, as you have known yourself, do you need Jesus in your life today? In your own life personally, with the struggles you have faced and overcome and gone through, have you gone through them with the Spirit of God leading you and being there present with you, or have you tried to do them apart from Him, and which way has worked out better for you? I have lived both. I grew up very religious, and the Lord knows, and I did everything from my own strength because we had to do things so right. And what I learned is that the, at the end of your, of your battles, at the end of your struggles, you fail. You cannot fight problems in the flesh with the arm of the flesh or you will surely lose. If you're fighting your war, if you're fighting your battle with the arm of the flesh, you are guaranteed to lose. So in my mind, I'm going, there has to be a way to do this and to overcome that actually works that is not dependent on my ability because my ability has already been proven because I'm already in this condition. When you fall into sin, it is not because of your excellence, it's because of your weakness. So if I'm weak enough to be there, why would I try to fight my way out when the, my weakness is what has gotten me here? There has to be one who is greater. There has to be something that is above my ability or my capacity or even desire to see myself not be in this mess. And so one day, thank God, he turned the lights on for me and deposited his spirit in me. And I, I, I refuse to teach that life with Jesus is somehow the gravy train and all, everything is wonderful now. Just say yes to Jesus and all your problems go away. That's just not good teaching and it's not accurate. What I can tell you is in this world, you're going to have trouble, lots of it, 
But if you are in Christ and he is in you, you can be of good cheer because he has already overcome and he will walk you through your process. He will walk you through your growth. He takes you from one glory to another to another. And when you're in the other, 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 you look back and go, that does not seem like it was glory. And he continues to take you to a better and to a better and to a better, deeper place with him. I have by experience now the authority to tell you The gifts of God are without repentance. What he has given, he has given. I have searched the scriptures and nowhere have I found anywhere that would indicate that he has paused his presence or retracted it. You won't find it in here. In any version that you look in. He has not said, I'm giving you my spirit for a season. Oh, the apostles needed it while they were establishing the church. Yeah, they did. Are we so arrogant now to think that we somehow don't need the same Spirit of God? Are we so arrogant now to think that, well, they did their work, and now all we need is a few good programs to keep us on the straight and narrow? I assure you, anything you do, walking in your own capacity, in your own ability, is going to generate fleshy, broken results. If you want kingdom results, we have to do it the way the book of written scripture this is the the voice and the word of god as he instructs us to do if we do it that way we are going to have kingdom results in our lives if you want to overcome weakness kingdom if you want to effectively minister kingdom and what is the key to releasing that level of capacity and that kind of power on the earth the spirit of god the spirit of god it says he gives to each one individually as he wills I function in a number of different capacities under the anointing of the Spirit of God. I will tell you, I do not flow in all of them all of the time. And what I mean by that is this. If, if, if you have a real world situation, something so practical, sometimes the, the work of God can be so practical, it's almost painful to even narrow it down like that to people who are so religiously minded. Let's say one of these kids, and I love the little zealous guy. <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't about to wait for the go-ahead. He's like, hey, apples, I'll have one of those. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Suppose he drops his honey-coated apple and makes a nasty mess on this carpet. What he does not need is for anyone to come and prophesy to him. <laughs> we missed that window. Doesn't need a word of knowledge. It's pretty obvious. He He could use a word of wisdom, maybe, but that is not the most effective. What does he need right now if this is the case? He needs a helper. He needs somebody with a rag that says, you know what? I have some cleaner. Let me help you. And somebody will clean up his mess that he didn't try to make. It just happened. Imagine that. The gift of helps being the most needed and most impactful gift in the house at the time. See, we have, we have somehow formulated in our fleshy minds this picture that, that the anointing rests on a servant of God, on a man of God. The anointing is only for the preacher. He's supposed to do all of the work. He's supposed to be the, the guy who accomplishes and the, fulfills the, the whole concept of kingdom advancement on the earth. Let me just disappoint you if that's you and tell you that is not how it works. Don't put all of your expectation in some preacher. Don't put your confidence in some leader. Don't do it. Put your confidence in the living God, and then as you walk with him, ask him, what is it that you want me to do? Because I believe every born-again believer has an assignment, has a destiny uh, from God on their life that if you will accept it and walk in it, you will live the most dynamic and fulfilled and fulfilling life that you can live. Until you say yes to walking in that and and allowing God to be God in your life, you have not yet found it. I believe the fingerprint of God is on every life. It says he gives these gifts out as he wills. If you are surrendered to the will of God and you say, whatever you have for me, that's what I invite and that's what I want. No longer 
chasing after my own thoughts or my own agendas. What is it that you want for me as the Lord of my life? How can I serve you the best? Usually we fly a different airline um, allegiant. May God forgive them for not flying this month. I don't know who makes those calls, but it was a bad call. They're not, they're not flying this month. Usually it's two hours and 15 minutes, and we are here directly, and it's so great. And then when my spoiled little self has to make a, a detour, we have to go to Charlotte first and then to here, it's five and a half hours. That's how hard my life has been to get here. <laughs> but it's interesting. We made that trek down here, and on the one leg of that, I sat beside this guy, and it's amazing how the Lord puts you where you belong. And if you, I, I tell you this, not only by this experience, I've had many, but this is one. When you are committed to the Lord, he knows what he has gifted you with. He knows what he's placed in you. And he knows what is uh, weak or missing or what somebody is needing to enrich their life. And you don't have to go hunting. You don't have to go looking for people. The Lord brings them right to you. You don't have to pounce and attack them with all of your brilliance and wisdom. I hope I was not overbearing. In fact, I thought that guy was going to be here, and maybe he is, and maybe he is. Oh, bless the Lord. <laughs> yeah, so I sit with this guy. And sometimes, you know, you get on a plane, you don't know what you're going to get, honestly. <laughs> Uh, it's, it can be a good time, and it can be a, oh, Jesus, when is this flight over kind of time. <laughs> this flight went so fast because I was sitting with another believer. And it was just amazing. In whatever time that was, a couple-hour flight, there was some relationship built. I believe the kingdom was increased. I learned things. I hope that what I deposited in him was beneficial to his life. I hope that there was increase. Wherever I go, I want there to be a release of increase from my life. And I also want to be in a place where I learn and receive from, because sometimes we get into the frame of mind that we're only give, 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 and we forget to receive. It is necessary that we are aware of the, uh, what spirit is in a person and that we receive from what is from God. There is more to this. Anyway, I'm just saying that to say, I was blessed. I was blessed. I would do that flight again and again and again. It is a joy to be around God's people. One of the things <coughs> that this gentleman said was something to this effect. If I don't get it word for word, forgive me. There seems to be a call for people to live a, a sound, godly life. And they're not flashy, and they're not out there creating a bunch of whatever, not drawing attention to themselves, but when there is a need in their community, they're there and they minister to that. It seems to me there's a place for just sound, right-minded, good people to be living a Christian life and being that steady presence in a society. I said, absolutely that is true. I believe that is the greater call. There are more people called to that level of ministry than there ever will be to be on this platform. I cannot do what you are called to do and do it as well as you could do it. And neither can you do what I am called to do. We have distinctly different callings and assignments. And if the Lord has not called you to something like this, then please hear me and hear me well. Do not pursue it. Don't. It'll ruin you. You don't know the beatings that come from being in leadership and being in ministry. Don't invite that into your life if you don't need to. If the Lord assigns you to it, just say yes, and he'll give you the grace for it. But I'm telling you, it's not nearly what it looks like to people. It's just not. Am I telling the truth? <laughs> it's not what it looks like. Sometimes people are not so nice. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Verse 12. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and have been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. 
If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. That is the point. He didn't ask for our approval. He didn't ask for our input into any of this. He did it the way he wanted to do it. It would be good for us to agree with his thoughts, to agree with his plan, and just say, you know what, this is the work of God, yes to that. So many times, though, when people get their own little agendas, we get our own little program set up, and it's not exactly what is in the word, and then we fight, 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 fight against this word to make it fit what we want. The best move you can possibly make with your life is to say yes to what he wants, because he knows what he's doing. We don't. The time for everyone to take a bite of humble pie. Sometimes we think we know what we're doing. I tell you, as long as we're walking in obedience to the word of God, yes, he gives wisdom and insight. But I'm telling you, if you try to do things in opposition to what is written in the word, you're going to struggle. If they were all one member, where would the body be? But now, indeed, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor can the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are what? Necessary. Many people think that they are somehow assigned to being the belly button ministry's leader. You say, here I am, I'm with the body. And they want to do nothing. I'm just here. I'll be here if you need me. The chief leader of the belly button ministries is the devil. It's good we all have one or we wouldn't be here. There was a season and a point in time when your, your navel was very, very vital. But after you were born and that is disconnected. You are no longer needed. There is no spiritual gift there is no spiritual calling. There is no spiritual assignment for anyone in the body of Christ to be the belly button ministries guy. You will never get out of your assignment. You will, you will not be able to duck out of the appointments that God has for your life by resigning to the fact that you're thinking you are useless and worthless. The enemy has done such a good job of creating this thought in people that I somehow have been pushed to the back and I don't matter and, and what am I, I, I'm here but I really am not effective and I'm useless. Let me break that one wide open for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> there is no one who says yes to Jesus who he does not have an assignment for your life. There is no one exempt from the Great Commission. There is no one exempt from having a life of ministry. If you are the body of Christ, one of your functions is to feed and to maintain and, and to keep a healthy body. Now, what would you rather do without? If you had to choose, you can either be without hands, without feet, or without your external ear, just the flappy. Your ears would still work, but just get rid of the, the decorative part. I think hands are pretty cool. These things can do amazing things. These things can create sound. First, they build the instrument that makes the sound, and then they fine tune it, and then they have other hands back there doing more things, and you can create amazing stuff with hands. Hands kind of need feet. That's an obvious. You don't need 
the flap of your ear as much, do you? That's just for pretty. And how many people will look at another one's assignment and say, well, the l- God didn't make me a hand, so I guess I'm just, what, useless. And you know what happens when we get into those mindsets is I've noticed this even in church groups. A church group or a church culture will sometimes take the shape or take the, the identity of one part of the body. And they'll say, well, we are the hands and feet church. Good. The world needs hands and feet Christians in it, big time. And they get so focused in hands and feet ministries that the hearing and the seeing and the smelling, we don't associate with them because they're not like us. Matter of fact, hands and feet don't see, they don't hear, they don't smell. And these other people that have those abilities are weird, so we're not going to hang out with them. Now I'm preaching truth and you know it. (laughs) I propose to you that this house would be so filled with every one of these gifts. I propose to you that they are all needed for today. I would propose to you that this place is never tainted or, or, or spun with some agenda that would silence or, or s- throw the water on the fire of one who is a little different. You know, to someone who has never heard <coughs> or experienced a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom from someone from the Spirit of God, they will hear those things and be like, that's weird. That is a weirdo. I want nothing to do with that. Because they've not experienced it. A common way that the Lord moves through me is through a word of knowledge or through a word of wisdom. And the challenge for me was to learn how can I use wisdom to handle a word of wisdom. Because when you're stewarding a gift, you have to steward it well or you can actually ruin people with that. And the greater the capacity for good, you have an equal great capacity for harm. And no matter what gift you're carrying or, or what anointing you have been given, we need to learn how to manage that and how to release it and steward it in a way that is actually effective for the profit of all. It is never to highlight the vessel. Amen. This is not diva ministries. When I roll up into town, I don't need uh, organic avocados. (laughs) I just don't. What I love more than anything is to be with real people who enjoy the presence of God and they're open to what God wants to do. I don't always get this right, although sometimes I do. Knowing when to release and how much. I was in a restaurant, and this has happened numerous times, and it sort of annoys me because when I go places, I would like to be able to just detach and let's just enjoy our amazing fish. Down here, they make good fish. It is so fun to come here. We don't have stuff like this at home. So you sit down, your waitress comes, and she's all trying to be nice, you know, blah, 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 how are you, all the, all the nice things. But I know there is deep turmoil in her life. What I've learned is if you say something too soon, she can mess up the order. <laughs> <laughs> you, ha- you have to know when to speak. <laughs> You have to know when to speak. This, this one lady, we were back home, and um, the waitress came, and she was in deep. There was something very, very deep going on with her, and the Lord t- told me it was about her little boy. And so she took her order and whatever. And so she came back and was just oddly waiting and chatting more than you normally would. And I was like, Lord, mm, 
you know how you, ah, I don't always want to, honestly. I sometimes just, I want to just eat my burrito and let's just live life here for a little bit. But no, it was just one of those moments that you know, and you're pushed into the spirit of God is, mm, here is your opportunity. And so I said, hey, how is your son doing? I never met this woman. And she stopped like, who are you, weirdo? And she's like, um, yeah, pretty good, yeah, you know, whatever. And I said, no, the young one. And then she had a bit of a change of expression. And I said, the Lord wants you to know that you are being a great mom to that boy. And you are giving him what he needs right now. And I don't know, maybe I should have waited. <laughs> there was just a meltdown at the table right there. I didn't know. Her little boy had major stuff going on with his spine, and she was, she was working several jobs, single mom, trying to take care of these kids, and all of this weight that she's carrying. And she's a believer, but just to hear the beauty of a word of knowledge is this. It's not natural, known information. I don't know anything about this lady. I don't even know how many kids she's got. All I know is the Lord said there is a young boy and speak these words. And to me, I'm like, I'm going to look really dumb here. And I spoke it, and it deeply impacted her and ministered to her. Just pouring gas on somebody's fire when they're about to give up and they're about to throw in the towel. I could tell stories until tomorrow afternoon. Because I've seen so many times when the Lord shows up in these things. It is never about making the vessel. It is never about making me look like somebody. Matter of fact, most of the time when I encounter things like this, I actually feel really kind of out of place. Like, uh, I don't want to invade people's lives like that, but at the same time, when I know it's the Lord, I need to respond to that and I need to deliver it. Many of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes it says, there was a lady this morning that came to me and just said that last night she was awake and the Lord put on her to pray for me before this service. Do you know, I recognize <clears throat> how intimidating that can be for some people. You go to somebody that you don't really know, especially the preacher guy, and I'm going to minister to you. Do you know how much I appreciate her obedience? I received a touch from the Lord this morning because that lady obeyed the voice of the Lord. That is amazing. That is the stuff that builds a community of life. It builds the presence. You cannot, what is this guy, this guy here, whatever he said this morning about the shepherd speaking and he's walking away from the sheep? That is so right. We were in Saudi Arabia and I watched that. There was about four of these guys together and a tremendous amount of sheep. And I'm like, how in the earth do they ever sort them out? Because they don't have pens, they don't have whatever, they're out in the open. And one starts to go this way, one goes that way, they start to walk away and they start doing their little thing, like they have distinct sounds that they make, the call that they release. And the most amazing thing, they, all of those sheep go exactly where they belong and they follow the voice that they know. I said, now that is such a great picture. My sheep know my voice. I'm telling you, when you've been filled with the Spirit of God and you're living with Him, when He puts that, that impression, some people don't say, they say they don't see, and I get that, not everybody's a seer, but when you receive the impression of the Holy Spirit, and He says, I want you to do this. Why do we question that and fight against that so hard? Because we don't want to look dumb. We don't want to feel out of place. We don't want to be the, hey, that's some weird dude. I get that. But when our confidence is in that I know his voice and I know this is what he said, then just do it. Just do it. I provoke you. I beg you as a church. Do what he asks you to do. Most of the time, you won't get a high five. You won't get your name mentioned. 
afterward you will probably go and feel really dumb. But you have no idea how deeply impactful the seed is that you put into somebody's life. There are people that minister around this place, and I don't know who you are. People that clean, people that sweep these floors, people that do all kinds of things, and never will their name be mentioned. Never will you get a big thank you. Never will you be celebrated. Do you know how important it is that you do your assignment? And do you know who's watching? When we shift our, our motivation from a thing of am I being watched and am I being appreciated, when we get rid of that nonsense and we do our things as if we were doing it straight for him. If Jesus is going to be in this house, how do I want this floor to look when he shows up? How do I want the restroom to be presented? How do I want the parking lot to look? When our motivation is, I am doing this in the house of Christ, everything changes. It does. And that is what I want to release in this house this morning. The thing that he, is, he has gifted you to do probably will look different than the person next to you. Probably going to sound a little different than the one next to you. Probably will even go against some of the things you've been taught as a child. I'm saying in the extremes of cessationless and sensationless, don't just chase a tickle. That only remains for a little bit. Your goosebumps, and then if you get a real good one, you get goosebumps on top of goosebumps. And then those go away too. Now, I love it when the Lord, when you feel the presence of the Lord, I love that. I want to live there. And one day we will. Every now and then, though, he shows up in these moments that are so ordained by his timing, and I believe he does that as a, as a place of refueling and encouragement and giving you strength, and he's saying, you know what, I have got you and I'm here with you. I'm here with you. I've, I'm the one that assigned you to this. I'm the one that gifted you with this. I am the one giving you the power to walk in this. Leave the results to me. Just do what I've asked you to do. Is that fair enough? Leave the results to Jesus. I have learned this sort of the hard way, and then a wise older man said to me, do what you are assigned to do, and don't bother looking back at the fruit. Either you will become proud or very disappointed. I said, whoo, that is a good word. Don't look at that. It is God's business. He said, put your seed in the ground where he asks you to place it, and the rest is God's business. If there's one thing I look forward to being released from, it is the burden of time. <laughs> time is not my friend. It never has been. The older I get, the more I don't like it. Skip down to verse 28 very quickly of still chapter 12. God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. 29, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Do all have the gift of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? The obvious answer is no. Not everybody does all these things, but some do. And I believe every born-again believer who is filled with the Spirit of God, not necessarily in administrative leadership type anointing that they carry, but will have access to every spiritual gift that God has laid out for his people to walk in. When you are available to him, maybe your primary gift is not um, a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge, but you're in a situation and somebody has desperate need to hear from God and the Lord will speak to you. Deliver it. Be an available vessel. So I don't understand it. Nobody ever taught me. Good. Walk with the Lord. He's the best teacher. Walk with the Lord. There are many times that as long as you're available and willing, the Lord will do things. The Spirit of God will do things through you that you never even dreamt that you had the capacity to do. And it can be for a season, and that grace will lift, and you will find yourself functioning in another capacity. 
It doesn't mean you've done something wrong. It means the Lord gives on his will and on his timing these gifts for his purposes. How badly I want to go into, yes, 31, but earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way, and he goes right into 13, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Earnestly desire the best gifts, which are the best gifts? If you continue to read, he gets into prophecy being far primary (coughs) and far superior to the gift of speaking in tongues. I love the extremes that he goes to. Continue to read on your own time. Read all the way down through the rest of that book. He says, I would rather speak five words that can be understood than 10,000 words in a tongue. And he goes on, and that's where a lot of people say, see, tongues is not important. We don't need that stuff in the house. We need words we can understand. Amen. We need words we can understand. What does he also say a little later? I speak in tongues more than any of you, and I wish that you all would do it like me. So what is that? How does that fit in? Hmm, just, I'm asking for a friend. (laughs) How does that fit into what you believe? There is a place and a time for tongues. My grandfather was a beachy Amish bishop. If you know anything about them, they have beards and they have black hats. And you would not expect them to be speaking in tongues, would you? Unless (laughs) unless he's German. (laughs) He had a call in his life back when Russia was under heavy communist leadership and he ministered behind that iron curtain for years. He would smuggle Bibles in and ministered to the underground church for years and years and years. There are times that men would speak an entire service in tongues. He had no idea what the language was. They could not understand him before or after, but everyone in that service knew exactly what was being said. Amen. And I heard that as a kid. I'm like, ooh. What the world? Because you get home on the home soil, thou shalt not speaketh with tongues. But when he's on assignment and people are hungry for the word of God, they don't care what it's, whatever language you have, give me something from the word of God because I'm hungry. And the reason that so many things have collapsed in the church in this country is because we have lost our hunger and traded it for our preference. You say, I don't like it that way. I want it this way. If we will get rid of our preferences and return back to a place of being hungry where we don't hate the messenger. Sometimes if you, if you despise the messenger, you will not receive the message. If you can't get past the vessel, you're probably not going to get to eat what, what the vessel is bringing. This church is in an amazing, amazing season. It really is. You have opportunity. You're creating culture that needs to be created. Some of what I see happening is you're going against the tide of what is traditional, uh, churchy stuff and whatever, and stepping into new places, new realms of hearing from the Lord, of responding to that, of inviting the Spirit of God to actually be God. Sometimes taking a bold move like that will cost you numbers and you will have more available seats. Sometimes you grow up to four or five hundred and then the Spirit of God shows up and then you grow to two (laughs) hundred. But at least you're growing. And you will know who is who in the jungle of the church world. This is never about competing. It's never about proving something. It's it's never about any of those things. Let this house be a house where the glory of God is given to him. Always. 
in whatever way that he moves, give him his glory. It is never about elevating a man or elevating a ministry. or ele- None of those foolish things. Let this house be a house where the glory always goes to him. All of the honor, all of the praise. Build this place on the word of God. Build it with the spirit of God leading you. Tremendous assignment on your lives. Some days I think of you and I just pray because (laughs) the Lord knows. Those that cover you in prayer, I thank God for them. Nothing of this scale and magnitude happens outside of people praying. And some who have been sitting in the belly button ministry section here need to resign from that post and get into the prayer room and sign up as a prayer warrior. You can pray. Oh, I don't pray out loud. Start! Let me set you free for just a minute. If you are praying to the person next to you, you better have your words right and you better make it sound nicer. They're not going to want to listen to you. If you're not praying to the person next to you, then say whatever your heart releases and the Lord is the great interpreter and he knows exactly what is trying to come through you. Sometimes we trip on our own words and for that sake we try to just shut it down. No, stop with that. Release what is in your heart to the Lord and then receive back. And the more that continues to happen, the more you will be praying what heaven is wanting to release. If you don't receive, you're not really going to know what to release. Amen and amen. You know what I'm saying is the truth. Black shirt guy right on the end row. I so appreciate the heart of God that is in you. May God be glorified. How many days have you served and worked and done things and you've never done it for your own glory? And he knows you. He knows the times when you're driving, you're just talking with the Lord and you're open and transparent with him. (laughs) Those times are more precious to him than they are to you. Many people have received breakthrough because of the way you have prayed for them and fought for them and ministered to them. God has your number. You will never be able to escape that. He has your number. Thank you for warring for people that don't even know how to help themselves. My God, I ask you for grace on this man. I ask you for protection on this man of God that the assignment you have placed on him, he will fulfill perfectly. I ask for the angels that you have assigned to minister to him that they will have open and free access to minister fresh water to this soul, that he not be weary, that there are times you have run to the desert like Elijah and you have wanted to hide and say, forget this. May the Lord send refreshing ministers of righteousness to pour the water back into your own soil. Don't give up, man of God. Don't even slow down. May God have his full measure of grace alive in your life. In Jesus' name. Some of you this morning are choking on the steak. I am not a milk dropper kind of preacher. I've gone very gentle this morning because I'm in a new house. You can be offended at me if you'd like to. Please do not be offended at this word. The best thing you will ever do is agree fully with the word of God in your life. That is all I want when, I, when I'm able to release the word of God. Get a hold of the word. Get a hold of the word. Believe him. And agree with him. When you agree with him, you're... You will not even, you have not begun to imagine what God is capable of doing through your life. 
you are unable to imagine what God is able to do through your life when you agree with him. I will try until I win. You are unable to imagine. You are unable to imagine what God is able to do through your life when you agree with him. Amen. Amen. Forgive me, I do not even know your wife's name, Nathan. Miranda? Marinda. Only the Lord knows exactly the many gifts he's placed inside of you to walk with this man. When you are wired like this man, it requires a very special companion. <laughs> <laughs> And some days, your eyes, if you could roll them far enough, would go out the back. <laughs> but then the Lord gives you grace, and you have understanding to walk with this crazy man and the gifting and the calling that he has placed inside him. And it is no accident that you're together. It's, it is divine appointment. It is by the hand of God. If there is one person I am thankful for in this life, it is my wife. Most women would not be... And I, I don't say this to, sh to just whatever. I'm only saying the Lord knows how to put the right gifts together. What he's given to my wife to walk, the grace to walk beside me has been, I have not appreciated it enough. And I know what he has given you is divine assignment to walk with him. You will carry things and take things you will take verbal beatings from people that say stupid things. And all you can do is smile and wave. The Lord knows your walk. He knows how many times you take things to him and give them to him. Keep doing that. My Lord and my God, would you give grace on the man and woman of God that they will walk unoffendable, that there is no word that will ever come to offend or divide or break down this marriage, that there is nothing that will ever break down the anointing and the, the capacity that they walk in now, Lord. I pray only that it will increase and that you will make them more effective as the season opens up and that your grace will be evident on them. God, I ask you for grace for every tongue that has ever spoken a foolish thing against a man and woman of God, I pray you will forgive them and cause them to see the error of their foolishness. And may this house always be seasoned with grace. Pastor, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for receiving this word. May God bless you richly and deeply. And hopefully we will sneak back in here when it's cold up there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Father, may we not take lightly the word that has just been deposited into us, Father. May we cherish it. May we steward it well. May it go deep and make an imprint on our hearts, Lord. For those of us that need that shaking up to resign out of belly button ministries, God, shake us today. Shake us today. For those of us that have put a cork on our spirit, we uncork it today and we say, let it flow. Let our hearts cry out to you, Abba. Lord, I thank you for Pastor Julian. Thank you for his ministry today. I pray that you would bless him a hundredfold for what he has poured out for us while he's supposed to be resting. <laughs> Fill him, Lord. Fill him afresh. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your ministry to us today.
Pastor Julian, thank you for your meekness. That was meekness. You didn't need to shout and huck and buck, but you could feel the power of God in the depth. Thank you for praying into our our body and delivering that word today. Thank you for being free. Thank you for bringing a steak. (laughs) Even if some of us are choking on it, it's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. There's still so much more, so if you're uh, trying to stop crying, don't. (laughs) Uh, There's been more baptisms added even during service today. So what I'm going to ask us to do is, can we all, if you want to leave your things, you can leave your things. If you want to grab your things, let's all begin to make our way outside. There's going to be fruit outside. If you are getting baptized, I'm going to ask you, will you please meet me over here in the prayer room? Uh, I just want to talk to you real quick. the Josh and I that are baptizing you, we want to talk to you real quick. If you're getting baptized, if you're deciding in this moment you want to be baptized again, uh, by all means, please meet us in the prayer room, and then everyone else will meet you guys outside. Praise the Lord. Hug somebody. Love on somebody. And uh, we'll see you outside in just a few minutes.